Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about working with numbers in Python. Now, numbers are one of the most common data types in Python, and any Python program you write is most likely gonna be dealing with numbers at some point. So, I wanna to talk to you guys about just the basics of using numbers. We're gonna talk about the different types of numbers that we can represent in Python. And I also wanna show you guys some awesome functions that we can use with numbers. So we can do certain like mathematical operations. We can do some awesome things with numbers. And I'm gonna show you guys all of that in this video. It's gonna be awesome. So first thing we can do is we can actually just like print out a number. So if I wanna write a number in Python, it's really easy. I basically just write the number. So I could say like print two, and this is just gonna print the number two out onto the screen. So I can use a whole number like this. I could also use a decimal number. So I could say like 2.0987. And Python's gonna be just fine with that. We'll be able to print that out onto the screen as well. I can also make numbers negative. So I could make this 2.0987 a negative number and Python will be able to handle that just fine too. In Python, we can also use basic arithmetic. So I could do things like addition, subtraction, multiplication. So I could say like three plus four. And now this is gonna print this out. Or why don't we say like three plus 4.5. And this will be able to print out the answer. So we get 7.5. And we can do addition, we could do subtraction, we could do division, or we could do like multiplication as well. So you can pretty much do whatever you want inside of Python. And if you want to make more complex mathematical equations, we can also use uh, things to specify order of operations. So I could use parentheses. Um, so for example, if I said three times four plus five, what Python's gonna do is it's gonna multiply three and four together. So it's gonna be 12 and then we'll add five to that. So we should get 17. Um, but let's say that we wanted to change up the order, right? I could actually put a parentheses around four and five and now it's gonna add them first, so it'll add four and five, so we'll get nine, and we'll multiply that times three, so we should end up with 27. So you can see we can use those parentheses to specify order of operations. So I could make like a very complex uh, little equation here just by using numbers and parentheses. We can also use one other operation, which is called the modulus operator. So I could say like 10 and use this percent sign Three. And this is actually read 10 mod three. And basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna take the first number, divide it by the second number, and it's gonna spit out the remainder. So it's basically gonna say, okay, 10 divided by three, that's gonna be three with a remainder of one. And so this is gonna give us the remainder. And you'll see down here, we get one because that's the remainder of 10 divided by three. And that modulus operator can come in handy quite a bit. We can also store these numbers inside of variables. So we can store them inside of these variable containers. So I could come over here and I could create a variable called like my underscore num, and we'll just store a value of, let's say like five in here. And so I could come down here and I can just print out my underscore num, and we'll be able to print that number out to the screen just fine. So in addition to doing things like a basic arithmetic, we can also, do some other stuff. So one thing I could do is I could actually convert this number into a string. So if I wanted to convert this number into a string, I can just say str, and I can put the number that I wanna convert inside of these parentheses. And so what's gonna happen now is this number is gonna be converted into a string. So when I click the run button, you'll see it's just printing out five, but now instead of being a number, this is actually a string. And this is gonna come in handy when you wanna print out numbers alongside strings. So I can come over here and I can say like, my favorite number. And we'll be able to print this number along with this string. So I can click play and it says five, my favorite number. If I was to get rid of this string right here and I wasn't converting the number into a string, now Python's gonna have a problem with this. It's not gonna allow us to do that. You can see we get an error. So anytime you wanna print out a number next to a string, you gotta make sure that you use that little string function. So there's a bunch of other stuff that we can do with numbers. And a lot of times in Python, you're gonna wanna be using specific, like more advanced math operators. So 
There's a bunch of different math functions that we can use on our numbers. And a function is basically just like a little collection of code that does something. So a function could perform an operation like a mathematical operation on our number. Um, it could also give us information about our number. So I'm gonna show you guys some of the most common functions that you'll be using in Python related to numbers. Uh, the first one is called ABS and it stands for absolute value. So we can get the absolute value of a number. And so over here, I'm just gonna make this variable negative five. And basically I can just say ABS and I can make an open and close parentheses over here. And this is gonna give me the absolute value of this number up here. So when I click the play button, you'll see it's just giving us five because five is the absolute value of negative five. I can use a few other functions. There's another one which is called pow. It's, so it's just P-O-W. And I'm actually not gonna use this variable. We just use a normal number. And this function is gonna allow us to pass it two pieces of information. So I can give this function two pieces of information. The first is gonna be uh, like a number, and the second is gonna be the power that I wanna take that number to. So I could say like three comma two, and this is basically just gonna be three raised to the power of two. So it's just gonna be three squared, so we should get nine down here. You can see that we do. So I could pass in like, you know, some crazy number, like we could pass in a four and we could raise it to the power of six. And so we should get like a pretty big number here. And you can see we get 4,096. So this pow function is really useful for taking numbers to specific powers. So in addition to using this pow function, we can also use another function which is called max. So I can say max, and what this is gonna do is it's basically gonna return the larger of the two numbers that we pass into it. So right now I'm giving this a four and a six, and this should tell us which number is higher. So over here, it's just printing out six because that's the bigger number. I can also use another function called min, and this is gonna do the opposite. So now instead of printing out the max number, it's gonna print out the smallest number, and it's gonna print out four down here, as you can see. Another cool function is called the round function, and this is gonna allow us to round a number. So it's just gonna follow like standard rounding rules. So if I said like 3.2 inside of here, now it's gonna round it down to just normal three. But if I said like 3.7, it's gonna round it up to four. So that'll allow you to round a number. So there's a few other functions that I wanna show you guys, but in order to get access to them, I'm actually gonna to have to do something called importing. And in Python, we can actually import external code into our files. And so if I wanna access these specific math functions, I have to import something called Python math. So I can just say from up here, math import and this star. And basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna go out and it's gonna grab a bunch of different math functions that we can use. So I already showed you guys a few of these different math functions, but there's actually a bunch more. And in order to access them, we're gonna to need to include this line of code inside of our file. So once we have that, now I can access a few others. So there's another function which is called the floor method and it's just F-L-O-O-R. And what this will do is it'll basically just grab the lowest number. So it's essentially just gonna chop off this decimal point. And you can see over here now we get a three because we're using that floor function. There's also another one called seal and that's just gonna do the exact opposite. So that's just gonna round the number up no matter what. So no matter what, we'll always get four if we have a three point whatever here. And there's another one which is called square root. So it's just SQRT. And essentially this is just gonna return the square root of a number. So I could say like 36 and now we should get six back. So those are all some very interesting functions. And inside of this math module, so we would call this a module, and you don't have to worry too much about what that is right now. Just know that when we put this line of code into our program, it gives us access to a lot more math functions. So it basically allows us to do a lot more things with math inside of our program. And there's a bunch of different math functions uh, in Python. And if you want, you can basically just go online and search for different math functions. I showed you guys a few here, and I would say the ones that we looked at here are probably the most commonly used, but there's a bunch more. And like I said, you know, there's 
tons of documentation on all of this stuff. So you can just look up, you know, math functions in Python, and there's going to be tons and tons like lists of these things that you can use inside of your programs to perform different math operations. But for now, that's just been a little bit about using numbers, a little bit about doing, you know, certain math operations and using functions with those numbers. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.